the world is witnessing a shroom boom. There are over 10,000 varieties of mushrooms on planet Earth, and we're still discovering new ways to grow them for food and medicine. Mushrooms can remove pollution from soil. Some can be used to replace plastic, and others can be used to digest it. What are fungi? Are they aliens? Can they help us? Since 2017, the global market for mushrooms has grown 30% to $50 billion. Now, inventors around the globe are turning mushrooms into bacon, packaging material, and even coffins. We looked at four different businesses building a more sustainable future out of fungi. It looks like a giant marshmallow, but it's actually a mushroom. Slice it and you get crispy vegan bacon. Or a convincing alternative to leather. And this lab grows an eco-friendly replacement to polystyrene foam that light but bulky material taking up a third of the space in all landfills. But can this company grow it fast enough to make a global impact? We visited Ecovative's headquarters in Green Island, New York to find out. The magic is in mycelium, the living root structures of mushrooms. Our entire philosophy is actually based around this idea that uh, nature provides. Mycelium is a great solution to both the plastics waste problem we face, as well as animal agriculture. I'm taking the mushroom mycelium, and then I'm just gonna section this Petri dish. All Ecovative products start with these natural building blocks. We have about 100 different strains in-house, um, and we will analyze those for the different material properties that they have. What do you think about the wall thickness on this? It's pretty thin. The company's best-selling product is called Myco Composite. It has similar properties to styrofoam, but it's completely biodegradable. We've worked with a variety of companies, some of them huge companies like Dell Computers, where they've used our earth-friendly packaging to ship servers. We've worked also with small New York startup brands like Keep Candles. Manufacturers design molds using large, recyclable plastic sheets. Heat makes the sheets pliable, so they can be shaped around any product. They start with wood chips, corn husks, or hemp. Then sprinkle in some fungal spores and add water. Pack the mixture into the molds, and the mycelium starts to grow, feeding on the shredded agricultural waste. Just over a week later, the form-fitted mold is ready to ship. So this jar, and it fits really nice in there. Ecovative has a different process to make vegan meat and leather, which it claims consumes far fewer resources than the real thing. And then we're gonna take this substrate, which will inoculate this sawdust. Workers still start with agricultural waste and spores, but these mixtures are placed in vertical farms growth chambers that mimic the conditions of natural soil. And so what it's really trying to do is grow up and punch out through the earth to form a mushroom. But we keep the environment such that it just grows and grows into this large marshmallow-like structure. That marshmallow is called aerial mycelium, and it grows over the course of about 10 days. We've just changed their shape from a mushroom to a slab that's 100 feet long and four feet wide. Ecovative can produce up to 3 million pounds of mycelium per year. In 2018, the company licensed its leather process to bolt threads. They make Milo, a leather alternative that has been used in clothing and handbags. The company also has a line of mushroom-based meat alternatives called My Forest Foods. The My is short for mycelium. The first product is called My Bacon and it's made from aerial mycelium that's cut into slices, compressed, and seasoned. It fries up and gets crispy, just like bacon, and tastes pretty amazing, too. We can't confirm the flavor, but my bacon is definitely a healthier option. It's high in fiber and has the same protein content as a slice of pork bacon, with one-fifth of the fat. The company projects that as it scales up, my bacon can eventually be grown for $1 per pound. 
the market price of pork bacon is nearly seven times that. And it takes nearly 600 gallons of water to produce one pound of pork, but just over one gallon of water to grow a pound of mycelium bacon. The market for meat substitutes was worth almost $8 billion in 2022, and it's set to nearly double over the next five years. Mycelium protein can mimic whole cuts of meat, as opposed to most other plant-based alternatives that come in the form of minced patties or sausages. My Bacon is available in over 40 stores in the northeastern United States. The company hopes to expand to a few hundred stores by the end of 2023. Right now, it's a matter of scaling up to fulfill bigger purchase orders. In 2022, the company built the world's largest commercial mycelium farm in Green Island, New York. If the CEO has his way, that will be the last one they ever need. We never want to build another mushroom farm. We want to go to mushroom farmers and say, hey, we have a better crop for you. We can pay you a higher price per pound and you can turn your rooms faster. And they're still looking for new ways to use mycelium, like replacing the plastic hidden in your clothing. Ecovative has partnered with Echo Leather, a sustainable leather tannery to make products like these. So this is what our mycelium looks like when it's harvested. And this is just untreated, totally pure mycelium. It's soft, it's squishy, it feels great on your face. We're finding there's lots of customers that would like to use this in sneakers, in bra cups, and in bags as a plastic replacement. For now, Ecovative design is a long way from displacing meat and plastics. But Eben says his company is finally in a position to properly scale its work. I've been working 17 years to get to this point, and like now the rubber meets the road. Across the pond, several companies grow food using garbage. These oyster mushrooms go from cellar to table in about two months. They grow fast in used coffee grounds, a rich source of carbon and nitrogen. It's just a pity not to use it more than a few minutes uh, to drink a coffee. A Belgian company called Permafungi found a way to give coffee grounds a second life. De la quantité, il y a 15,000 tonnes de marre de café par an en Bruxelles. Et ce marre de café, s'il est mis au même endroit, euh, il est acide, il détruit, il détruit les sols. Instead of letting grounds wind up in a landfill, Julian's team collects them, uses them to grow mushrooms, and then sells the mushrooms to local shops and restaurants. And now, they're using wood waste and mushroom spores to make insulation panels. Workers from Permafungi head out by bike to pick up excess coffee grounds from coffee shops around their city. Uh, donc on fait 15 km par jour, uh, avec uh, jusqu'à parfois 100 kg de café récolté par jour. The grounds are brought back to the underground growing facility. They're mixed with other ingredients inside this giant drum. Donc dedans il y a de la paille de mer de café qu'on pasteurise pendant la nuit. On a rajouté de l'eau. Et ce matin, on a rajouté la semence du pleurode, donc le mycélium, pour qu'il puisse se développer donc, dans ce, cet environnement de paille et de café. Ouais. Then they're packaged into bags with straw to create a nutritious soil for the mushroom spores. Et le champignon est capable de dégrader le marc de café. Il ne voit pas de caféine, il ne voit pas du marc de café. Euh, il voit euh, de l'azote, de l'hydrogène, de l'oxygène, euh, du carbone. Et il va utiliser cette base pour euh, tirer juste ce dont il a besoin. After about two weeks in a dark, damp room, the bags are brought to a brighter space, where the mushrooms begin to sprout. Mushrooms are some of the fastest growing foods on the planet. They don't require sunlight to grow, just a substrate and moisture. Permafungi has been using coffee grounds since 2013. Up to 2,000 kilograms of mushrooms grow here every month. Once they're harvested, the team delivers the mushrooms to local restaurants. It's a circular process in which byproducts are reused rather than wasted. So, et donc l'idée, c'est de récupérer ce qui peut euh, avoir toute une série de, de qualités pour en faire quelque chose. Permafungi's operation has global potential. Every year, coffee drinkers around the world generate about 18 million metric tons of used grounds. Every year, the company recycles about 20 of those tons. It's also figured out a way to make biodegradable insulation and packing material. When we grow mushroom, at the end of the production, we do produce a lot of organic waste. And the idea with this new line of production was to uh, reuse the, uh, our own waste. Across the border, in Paris, one Michelin-starred chef is also repurposing used grounds. That's the tortelli we made with 
le, le marc des cafés et les cafés. À l'intérieur, on a une farce de, euh, des tortelli avec les champignons. Simone Zanoni gets his mushrooms from Le Boite des Champignons, a local startup that recycles coffee grounds and wooden packaging. Nous, notre métier, ça va être de reconstituer un tronc d'arbre. Le pleurote, c'est un champignon qui pousse traditionnellement sur les troncs d'arbre. Et on va reconstituer ce tronc d'arbre à partir des déchets de la ville, notamment le marc de café, les cajots euh, que vous voyez sur les places de marché qu'on va venir broyer. On a typical day, the company collects about 2,000 kg of grounds from offices around Paris, including the upper house of the French Parliament. The mushrooms are available in restaurants and a few major supermarket chains. The company also sells grow your own mushroom kits online. For Arnaud, this system is a return to old practices. Depuis toujours, la matière organique, nos déchets euh, organiques, ont, sont retournés au sol via du compostage, etc. Début euh, quoi, courant 19e, début 20e, les maraîchers de Paris récupéraient le crottin de cheval, l'emmenaient sur leur exploitation et cultivaient les fameux champignons de Paris. Mais toute cette filière, en fait, a été cassée petit à petit. Et notre métier à nous, c'est de recréer cette filière. For permafungi, it's all about re-establishing natural cycles. On fait quelque chose. En fait, c'est comme dans la nature. Dans la nature, il n'y a pas de déchets. Le, le déchet, c'est une invention humaine. This coffin is alive. It's made from mushrooms that soak up the toxins human bodies leave behind, and it eliminates the need for massive amounts of wood, steel, and concrete used to bury the dead. Funerals in the U.S. use enough of these materials every year to build a tower of caskets the size of the Empire State Building. The loop coffin grows in a lab in seven days and absorbs into the soil in under two months. But can it replace traditional burials? We visited the creator of the world's first mushroom coffin to find out. This is definitely my baby, yes. <laughs> I think about it when I wake up, I think about it when I go to sleep. Yeah, I see them. We got some friends. Bob Hendricks searches for the building blocks for a loop coffin in Delft's Hout Forest in the Netherlands. It's easy to find mushrooms, but it's hard to find the specific one you need. <laughs> some are edible, but some might kill you as well. Aha! Uh -huh. He harvests samples to bring back to the lab every weekend. And this is not the one we use, but we, we could make a coffin out of it. We can try. This one might be the holy grail. Here you can see all the wires, so it's almost like veins of the organism. It's mycelium, thin white fibers that grow easily on all kinds of surfaces. Mycelium is the root structure of mushrooms, and simply said, they're just the recyclers of nature. So everything that turns into death, they turn it into life. It feeds on decaying plants and animals, expanding at a rate of half an inch per day. From this little piece of mycelium, we can grow a living coffin. Really? Yeah. Back at Loop's headquarters, Bob and his team mix the mycelium with wet sawdust and spray it with a secret sauce that helps it grow. Then they seal it in a plastic mold shaped like a coffin. This part of the process is also a secret. Fungus fills in the empty space and it dries within a week. It's a building technique that Bob has been experimenting with for years. Right now, we tend to work with dead materials, while I envision a world in which we work together with organisms. The final product is light but sturdy. It's almost like a sort of styrofoam material, so it's really rigid, yet it's super lightweight. It can carry up to 440 pounds. Each coffin is lined with a layer of moss sourced from a local farm. The moss has two functions in that it helps to decompose the body faster and rich in biodiversity. And the other one is to give humans the experience of becoming part of the cycle of life. A body interned in a loop coffin should not be embalmed or wear any synthetic materials, so it can transform into soil faster. Most people's deaths leave a much larger footprint. A conventionally buried body contains a mix of over 200 chemicals, from tobacco residues to dry cleaning chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, and embalming fluids. It can take up to 12 years for an embalmed body to turn into a skeleton, but soft tissues release toxic chemicals and microbes after only a few months. And traditional coffins contain preservatives, paint, and have metal handles. All of these substances can leach into soil and water, making it unhealthy for the living. Loop coffins can fix this because of a process called mycoremediation. That means that mushrooms will chow down on almost anything, even pollution. 
these fungi, of course, can have a lot of intake of uh, heavy metals and all kinds of uh, chemical components because they, they store it in their hefe, in their, in their fungus body. But breaking old habits can be difficult. Replacing bodily fluids with preservatives started during the American Civil War. The bodies of fallen soldiers needed to be transported long distances for burial. Embalming made it possible for President Lincoln's open casket to remain on display for a three-week train trip from Washington to Illinois. And it has been standard practice ever since. Bob wants people to return to the natural practices that existed for most of history. As humans, why are we not part of the cycle? And then we can actually enable people to feed the earth instead of pollute it. Loops off to a modest start, but globally, green funerals are becoming more popular. People are really interested in new things in the funeral uh, business. And um, uh, our members are asking if they can uh, use the loop uh, coffin for their burial. Today, they make up a small proportion of overall funerals, but two in three American consumers say they'd consider a green burial and they have a growing list of over 300 providers to choose from. Given enough time, we all return to dust. But Bob Hendricks hopes we'll choose instead to become compost. Mushrooms are definitely having a moment, but we might only be getting a glimpse of our fungal future. I would say there's like a gold rush going on in terms of folks getting into the mycelium sector. It reminds me a little bit of like the industrial revolution in the 1900s, because like everyone's trying all these different approaches to like solve the same problems. Hi, this is Daniel Allen from the World Wide Waste team. We want to bring you more stories that take a look at garbage and the creative ways that people deal with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We also read all the comments. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, let us know. You just watched excerpts from some stories we've done about mushrooms. Click here for the full episodes.